what's scarier? That thing you got to spend a little time finding upstream. What has caused you delay? What has caused you to play small? What has made you dim your light to match those around you? What is causing that? If you spend a little time finding it, what is scarier? Facing that or being at the end of your life wishing you could do it over? Hey everyone, welcome to today's Tapping Solution podcast episode. I gotta tell you, I am so incredibly excited about the guests that I have on today, about the conversation that we're gonna have today because uh, this man is somebody who I admire not only because of the impact he's had in the world and the incredible success and knowledge that he has in the world, but really more than anything about the human being that he is. I've gotten to spend some time with him over the last few years with him and other friends in exotic locations around the world. And what I love about him is just what a kind and compassionate and present person that he is and how much he cares about his relationship with his wife and his kids and really how he shows up in the world. And I wouldn't bring somebody on here as a guest of the podcast if I didn't want it to be somebody that you really needed to hear from in terms of the message they have to share. And so I'm really excited to bring on today somebody who's a multiple New York Times bestselling author, uh, uh, investor, entrepreneur. So welcome to the Tab Intrusion Podcast, Dean Graciosi. Uh, Alex, so good to be here. And thanks you for that kind, kind uh, intro. Feel the same about you and your family. And, you know, I think, I think we hit it off because our values align so much. So pleasure to be here. And, I, and everybody listening or watching, I know you got lots of options. Uh, so thanks for joining us here today. We'll we'll make sure that we uh, deliver today and be worth yes, all your time. I, I have no doubt about that. So <laughs> um, I was thinking, you know, over the last 24 hours, just thinking about the conversation we're going to have today and really thinking about, you know, the people who get our emails and follow our work and what they really need right now. And I was, I was listening to some of the podcasts you've already done. And there was one particular message that really just hit home for me and I think is so important right now. And really what it had to do was, was how to live up to your potential. And yeah. it is something that you said on another podcast where I was like, when I heard it and I was like, ooh, that's something that over the last few years has been so prevalent for me. And, and for anybody listening or watching right now who feels like they have something inside of them where they are meant for more, they're meant to give more and be more and show up as more in the world. And, and so I want to frame our conversation today around that, yeah. about how to live up to your potential. Cause I know, you know, you're doing an amazing challenge, uh, in, in the coming weeks. We already have started to share about, about the, the time to thrive challenge with your good friend, Tony Robbins, who is a partner in our app and somebody who we loved so, so dearly because of the impact he's had on us. And so I want to frame our conversation today around that theme of how to live up to your potential. And especially right now with what we're going on, what's going on in the world. And so the first question I want to ask you, and I really want to hear just a little bit about your story, because I think that so many people struggle to believe in themselves and think that they're not capable, that they're not smart enough or good enough, or they didn't come from the right family or anything like that. And I'm always amazed when I hear your story about what you have achieved in your life. So I'd love if you could just hear, you could just share a little bit about your story. Yeah, Alex, thank you. And I'll share enough so everybody has a context to understand where I came from. And it doesn't mean my story needs to match yours. And it doesn't mean you have to have a horrific childhood in order to be successful. And it doesn't mean you have to have a, you know, born on third base to have a successful life. You know, we've, we've, I don't think any of it matters where you were. It just matters where you are at this moment and what we do forward and what occupies occupies our mind and our beliefs and positive beliefs, limiting beliefs, limitless beliefs, you know, all the things that if you're a part of Alex and Nick and, and, and his family and, and the Tapping Solution, you, you already understand some of these things. So maybe today, as you listen or watch, we could be a reminder service of some of the things that really make the difference when it comes to, you know, what does it mean to tap into your full potential? You know, a quote I read a decade ago that always stuck with me was Dale Carnegie said, the biggest plight of the human race is knowing you have more potential and not utilizing it. If you really hear that, it's it's not about just being rich or just being happy or just having a good marriage or just being a good parent or just having control or just having freedom. If you know that you're playing at a level six, but you're really the inside of you knows there's a 10, 10 out of 10, man, I don't think we can find happiness. I, I don't think complacency and abundance and joy live on the same street. Like you can't be complacent and not stretch, not take uncomfortable action and still 
feel happy. So when I think about those things, when you say, how do you, how do you reach your full potential? What, what I'd love to do, Alex, especially because we, we have history and we have a relationship, is I'd love to share the way I think about it. I think that we have to spend time going upstream. I heard a story once, and I think it was Tony who shared it. And he said there was, it was about doctors not being able to solve problems fast enough. But just hear this context and why I think going upstream, this is what anchors to my mind, and maybe I can give this to you. A doctor pulls into uh, the medical college and he pulls into the parking lot and there's a stream and he sees somebody drowning in the stream and he runs out and saves that person. But then there's another person. Then there's another person. Every time a new doctor pulls in, he runs out to the parking lot and says, come on, hurry, help me save all these people that are drowning. Finally, one person pulls up, sees all the people, sees all the doctors, sees the chaos and goes to pull away. And someone says, I can't believe you're driving away and not helping us. So where are you going? He said, I'm gonna drive upstream and find out who's throwing these people in. Yeah. And so many things in my life, you know, you see somebody, my dad had diabetes, that was the end result. And they wanted to give him all this medication and, and he's a really health nut. And he did enough research to find out how he could go upstream and change his diet, his lifestyle, the way he ate, what he ate in the morning, what he ate before he went to bed. And he created a routine, he hasn't been on diabetes medicine for a decade, because he went upstream. So when you say we have this full potential, I believe we have to go upstream a little and find out what are those things that have already cost you to miss opportunity in the past. I bet to say, if you're human, we, if we were sitting down having coffee today, you could say, ah, oh, I remember that time I almost started my own business. I almost invested in this company. I almost went and asked her to dance. I almost, almost, almost. We all have missed opportunities in the past, but if you dig in deeper, why did you miss that opportunity? Did you feel insecure, too old, too young, need money to make money? I, my parents were divorced a lot. I don't really know what a real relationship is. Uh, I'm not the type, I'm a procrastinator. I'm not good with technology, right? The more we go upstream, the more we find that root thing that could have been inherited, given to you by your parents, by schooling, by, by a failure, by someone taking advantage of you, by that someone who was unfaithful in high school or someone who robbed your money when you made your first investment. If we can find that thing, right? And we all explain this. Tony Robbins explains this so well. I really think that that's a great place to start. And I want to share one more thing, Alex, and then please take me any direction. You know your audience better than anyone, and I'd love to serve here today. But I want to share something. We've had, we had COVID for two and a half years. And when COVID hit, uncertainty at all time high. To mask or not to mask? To vaccine, to not to vaccine? Do I stay home? Do I quit my job? Do I start my own thing? Do I do something online, right? The uncertainty was high. And during uncertain times, you need the tapping solution. You need a way to find yourself and be aligned and be present. But you take two years of that, two and a half years of uncertainty, and then we have a media that's pushing us way to the right or way to the left, when I believe most of us live in the middle and most of us know we have more in common than we do separate. We have more to fight for together than we do apart, but that's not what the media wants, right? So now we have separation, we have arguments, we have a war, all these things going on, and then bam, we go into a recession, we go into inflation, which is leading to a recession. It's like, it was the great resignation, and now is it the great recession? So if you feel uncertain, if you feel a little off, if you feel you're not sure where you wanna go, congratulations for being a human being. So what I want to say is during times like this, here's an unfair advantage. Whatever that was that's held you back in the past, that upstream piece, it's magnified. It's magnified because of all the uncertainty and way easier to identify, right? So again, I'm going upstream and I want to answer, I want to keep coming downstream all the way to some actions people can take, Alex. Yeah. But here's what I would, I would if, if nothing else today, Spend a little time really thinking, well, why did I miss that last opportunity? Why do I feel insecure? Why did I not have the courage? Why did I not have the confidence? Why am I not doing the thing that serves my heart, impact others? I know I'm called to serve. I know I'm meant for more. What is holding me back? And just keep asking the question over and over again to you go, oh my God, my parents went bankrupt. I feel I'm not smart enough. I cheated in college. My first girlfriend cheated on me and left me. I started that one business. When you find it, here's what I'd encourage you to do, okay? 
and, and again, I, I'm not, I like calling out when I hear something. I love when Tony Robbins says leverage. You gotta get leverage, right? When you find that thing, and you will, if you spend the time today, this week, to find that thing, what I would love for you to ask yourself, what is more painful? Overcoming that thing, right? They say, there's a great book written, your next level lives on the other side of the thing you fear the most. The next level lives on the other side of adversity. The thing you've been even putting off, right? What's scarier? Facing that, saying, yeah, I'm not that smart. I didn't get a degree. I don't have a lot of money. I was cheated on. I did lose my money. And use that as power, as fuel. What's scarier? Letting that thing stop you from reaching your full potential or being at the end of your life. And I always, I think I got this from Ed Milet, a version of it, and, and I think about it all the time. Could you imagine meeting your maker or meeting God, whatever you, whoever you believe your maker is, and God playing you a video of the woman or the man you could have been? So if I want to get leverage, what's scarier? That thing you got to spend a little time finding upstream, what has caused you delay? What has caused you to play small? What has made you dim your light? to match those around you? What is causing that? If you spend a little time finding it, what is scarier, facing that or being at the end of your life wishing you could do it over, praying you could do it over, asking God on your knees, please let me go back, do it one more time. Imagine if you gave yourself the gift today instead of waiting to the end of your life and saying, today is the day. I am not letting that stop me. I'm not letting that stall. I am living into my full potential. I always think of, and I think of crazy stuff, Alex. But I always think of, I want God to watch the video of my life and be like, damn, you're crazy. Hey, everybody come here. Look at the crap this guy tried. Look how many times he failed. Look at, oh my, you really thought that was going to be a business? But damn, pretty impressive. You squeezed all the juice life had to give you. That's, that's what drives me forward. Am I perfect? Am I, people think you're bulletproof when you become more successful and you don't have fear and you don't have imposter syndrome and you don't doubt yourself. That never goes away. Alex, I think if you and I were really honest with yeah. ourselves, we probably felt it in the last seven days. Absolutely. It yeah. never goes away, but you learn how to overcome it. You learn how to be yeah. stronger. You learn how to evoke that inner strength, not that voice telling you it's not going to work. Yeah. You know, uh, a couple things to comment there that really resonated for me as you were talking there. I mean, number one, you know, I kind of asked you about your story and it's interesting because you know, one of the stories that I told myself early on in terms of, you know, becoming somebody to share my voice or just to share what I had to share with the world was that I didn't have a tough enough story, was that I came from good parents. My parents, literally today is my parents' 45th wedding anniversary, oh, 45 so years. Great. It's like I came from good parents. And obviously I work with my brother and sister and get along great. And part of me was like, oh, you know, I don't have that story of overcoming enough for people to want to share. And what I liked about what you said there was it doesn't matter what that story is that you're telling yourself, whether it was like, you know, I did, I suffered too much. Who am I? I'm not enough. Or in my case back then was, oh, I don't have the story of suffering and overcoming whatever it might be. And so regardless of where we come from, whatever our story was that we're telling ourselves, it's really more about the story we're telling ourselves now in terms of what we're holding ourselves, how we're holding ourselves ourselves back. And I think it's beautiful what you talked about there to say, hey, I can share a little bit about my story, but it doesn't matter. What matters is what we do now and the leverage that we're working to create. And what you mentioned there, something that I've thought about a lot about getting to the end of my life and, and not wanting to have regrets. I think they've, I've heard before that, you know, when they interview people in, in retirement homes or people in reaching the end of their life, one of the most common themes that comes up for people that they, that they want to share to a younger generation is to not have those regrets, to not have yeah. the life unlived because they're at a point where they go, I just wish, I wish, as you said, I wish I'd asked that girl out. I wish I'd started the business. I wish I'd done that. And, and that's why I'm so, you know, for starters, so deeply passionate about having people do what they can to get that leverage with themselves to live up to their potential. And so I'd love to hear from you, you know, why now? Right. I mean, I, I wish, you know, one of the challenges that we have with, with reaching people online, it's amazing. We can reach so many people, but sometimes I wish I could show up in person and be like, no, no, grab my hand. Let's go do this together. Let's go show up and do this event and show up in person. But what's different about now with our current environment and why you feel like right now was when people really need to step into their full selves. Man, such a great question. And, and you know, I, and I'm sorry, you did ask me about my journey and I just, I was in my head of- No, that's okay. Wanting to serve. 
right? And, and there's two things I want to share. There's two things and the current environment and why now. I don't want to forget that. But I want to just share this a little bit about my story. And the only point, you know, I got into a phase where I knew the end result and I just want to share that upstream. But secondly, I know what it's like that I didn't, you know, my parents were married nine times. I moved 20 times by the time I was 20 years old. Completely different childhoods, Alex, but we're friends. Every time we connect, like, I feel like you're a brother that I never met. And I don't know your birthday. I don't know when your anniversary is, but I hold you as a dear friend forever because of your heart and what you do and the impact you want to make others. So it shows that, you know, wherever you came from, we lived in a trailer park when I was three. We, I, we came home from school at five years old and we got evicted from the trailer because my mom was working three jobs trying to support us. So we had those, but look, we ended up in the same spot, Alex, at the same mastermind with the same peers impacting lives, right? Um, so we all take different journeys, but I want to share one pivotal moment in my life. I started cutting firewood in high school. I started fixing wrecked cars. I had a collision shop. I had auto sales, but there was a pivotal moment and maybe this could be just the easiest way to explain it. I, I went after things bigger than anybody else because I was running away from pain. So I want to give people permission. Yeah. If you need to run away from some pain, be disturbed with inaction. Use the pain just to get lift off. doesn't mean you got to live in pain forever, but use the pain to move. That's all we need is movement. So... I know it's not probably not healthy and maybe it's not the advice other people give you. Focus on a bigger, beautiful future you can. But if pain gets you to move, move. My whole 20s, early 20s was pain of ending up like my parents. So I wanted to get away from that. I love them and they're good people, but they struggled with everything in relationships, with finances, with life, with friends. And I just saw a better way. So I used that. So use whatever it takes. With Alex, What did I, mean? I hope my kids, I'm going to digress here for a second, Alex. My kids are going to be more like you and your brother and your sister, right? I've obsessed to build a stable, amazing relationship. You see the relationship I have with my wife. I, I fall more in love with my wife every day. You know, best way to serve your children is to love their wife, Abraham Lincoln said, right? Yeah. And I, I want to love my wife. I want to be an amazing dad. My kids are unbelievable. And I see my kids being more like you, your brother and sister and your family, right? In fact, someday I want to chat with you. I should probably send my kids to go work with you one summer. So you let me know if you got a job for them. That would Love be it. amazing. Um, but I share that because we can use that story. Alex might not use running away from the pain. Alex might use the story of my parents did such a great job. I want to show them the potential. They, they yeah. handed me the baton, right? Tell me if this doesn't resonate with you, with you Alex. I Your parents handed you the baton. And you don't want to slow down the race. Like your parents ran around the track and said, Alex and Nick, here's the baton. You don't want to be like, oh, I wonder if I should, right? You're like, look what they did for me. Well, well let me, I mean, I'll just share quickly. And, and for starters, of course, you know, uh, I, I will share that, you know, our, our story was very much an immigrant story that I came to the U.S. when I was four years old. And so we had struggles along the way, but I think my parents always had that loving environment that made me feel safe. But, but mm -hmm. what you just said resonated with me. I can still remember my freshman year of college. Um, or after my freshman year of college, we're going to a great school, Boston College. My parents were paying a, a ton of money. They got in scholarships to other places. And I remember looking at my grades after that freshman year where I drank too much alcohol, partied too much, and going, man, I'm letting my parents down. And, and having that pain push me to say, I've got to do better. I've got to do yeah. better for them and, and I've got to do better for myself and turning things around those next few years to be getting amazing grades because I shifted that pain perspective that I have. And I think what you mentioned there, I know you said some people disagree with you on that. I could not agree with you more. It's one of the things that really clicked for me the last few years. And I think it's something important to remember. If you have success, it's easy to only think about the positive, what you're working towards, what your goals are, and to forget that sometimes connecting with the pain or finding that pain can motivate you to move forward in a much stronger way than only focusing on the, you know, the next level of success or happiness or whatever that you might have. Um, so I really think that's a really critical point that you shared there to say, no, don't, don't play down connecting with that pain. Don't live in the pain, but use that to motivate you to push forward with what you're doing. Yeah. And, and, no, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Tom Bilyeu, who's a mutual friend of ours, said, sometimes you got to go to the dark side. 
right? Even if it's just for that, it's like the turbo boost in a car, right? If you need a little turbo boost, might go there. So I'll just share one more thing, then I'll get to the current why now. Um, I just want to share when I was in my mid 20s, I had some success. And then I bought Tony Robbins course, which I think we both have, Alex, at a point in our lives. I bought Tony Robbins course off of an infomercial. And it just made me see so many patterns. Love Tony's favorite story, and I think we could all rob this from him. Favorite line for me is life happens for us, not to us. And yeah. there was a moment I just realized all the pain, all the craziness, that was all for me so I could be the human I was at that point for liftoff. But the second thing it did, I was like, wow, I gave Tony Robbins money. He gave me information. He didn't have a product. He didn't have to warehouse it. It was stuff he learned from Jim Rohn and countless others. And he collectively put it together, packaged it and sold it to me. And it changed my life. He sold me information. So I went into the information business at about 28 years old and started selling what I knew. And yeah. the reason I'm sharing that with you is I had dyslexia, barely got out of high school. I didn't go to college, didn't have money. Although, you know, I was on my way of doing some pretty good things at the time. And I decided to create a course and do an infomercial because there was no internet back then, right? And I bought my course off an infomercial with Tony. So long story short, the reason I'm sharing this with you because maybe you could put yourself in these shoes. I said, I'm going all in. I'm excited. I'm going to sell what I know. I was going to teach people how to make money with cars. I mean, think how crazy that sounds. But back then with an infomercial and stuff, I had to put about a $200,000 investment together between the infomercial and inventory. So you could imagine the inner self-doubt I had to fight. But I'm like, I'm going for it. I'm excited. But then this is the point. My sister drove from Virginia to New York where she lived. She lived in Virginia. I lived in New York to give, have a sit down, like an intervention, Alex. And she's like, listen, I love you. We're so proud of the success you have, but now you're crazy. You're not Tony Robbins. You don't have connections. You didn't go to college. Who's going to want to learn? Like that people learn from professors, Dean, not you. And she was doing it out of pure love. And I remember she left and I asked a couple friends and they were just like, you're a fool. That's not going to work. But here's the part I'm sharing this because we've all been this. I took a walk. I still to this day, I bought, I bought my childhood home and I bought a 20 acre farm in upstate New York where I'm from. We go there every summer and I still drive down this road that I took a walk on. And I remember walking down this road and it was like I was having conversation with two people. And part of me was, oh my God, you're not Tony Robbins. You're not six foot seven. You're not friends with celebrities. You haven't changed lives. You don't have a lot of money. You don't have that, not dynamic. You, you haven't studied personal development your whole life. Who the hell do you think you are? You got to spend all this money. You're going to go broke. You're going to lose it all. People are going to laugh at you. That is ridiculous. And I remember thinking to myself, this is crazy. I shouldn't do it. But I, I thank God to this day, Alex, because there was another voice that said, you said it earlier. It wasn't, I, I, this is in ret retrospect looking back, but it was, you're freaking meant for more. I knew I was supposed to do something bigger. I knew I was supposed to do something different. I knew it was scary. I knew that maybe people wouldn't want to learn from me, but I had to do it. And I remember this walk of like two voices arguing be yeah. happy. You should be blessed where you are. You should be grateful. You're making more money than your dad and you're 27 years old and you didn't go to college. Be but I still knew on the other side, it's like, no, that is the voice that at the end of my life, I will regret that I didn't step into it. And it was that moment, that walk, that time where I just said, I'm doing it anyway. I'd rather try and fail than wait my whole life saying, what could I have been? What could I have? And I wouldn't be here with you, Alex. We wouldn't have met. I wouldn't have multiple New York Times bestselling books. I wouldn't be partners with Tony Robbins. I wouldn't be doing a, a challenge where we're going to put a million people in to show them how to thrive in this shifting world. None of that would have happened that very day if I just would have said, hey, they're right. So if, if anything about my story helps, I hope that does. And what is it that, you know, you know, I know that, that, that people that follow our work, there's a lot of, uh, you know, tapping practitioners and coaches, and there's also a lot of people that are just passionate about helping other people. I mean, I, the, the number of comments that we get every single day in our community, through our app of people who use tapping and it transformed their life and mm -hmm. they want to be able to give back and help others and do more. I mean, what is it that created the confidence? I mean, what can you tell to somebody who says, I want to do more? How how can they kind of get going and create that confidence yeah. when they have those two voices inside their heads going, why should I do it? And I, I think so many of us in this world have that same voice of going, I'm not Tony Robbins, right? Yeah, like we all definitely. admire him so much. So much of our internal language, I can't tell you how much of my internal language and beliefs are straight from 
Tony's mouth in terms of what I learned in terms of how I could believe in myself. But so how does somebody create that confidence, create that momentum to move forward so they start taking action and start believing themselves? Great, great question. And you, you asked, I, I want to combine that in your last question. Yeah. Um, I'm a little behind on your questions is like current, you know, what's going on currently and why now? Yeah. And, and here's what I believe. If, if you spent time today Googling when the most success happens, when the most amount of money is made, when some of the coolest companies you know about were formed, it was done during a recession or a down economy. And what I believe is in times like this, we tend to freeze, right? We tend to say, let me see what's gonna happen. Where are things gonna land? And I think the majority of people do that. And what I believe is those that don't freeze, those that get to see where the world is going, those that investigate, those that take uncomfortable action, you have such an unfair advantage because most people are standing still, right? In a yeah. great economy, everybody's like, this is easy. I'm gonna go in business. I'm gonna do my own thing, impact others. But when it gets a little crazy, they go, ooh, I'm just gonna wait here. And if you wait, in so many cases, you're left behind. So you asked me in a, in a, before, why is current now? Because I think now is the time. You need to find that strength, that inner courage to move forward because you have less competition and your family and the world needs you now more than ever. So that that's one thing. Secondly, if, if everybody always is going to look through the lens of what they do, right? If, if, if you make screwdrivers, you're going to want a screwdriver to fix everything. If you make hammers, you're going to want the hammer to fix everything, right? Self-education, teaching people what I know, teaching people... It's been Tony's life for 45 years, mine for 25 years, and it's been the greatest thing I've ever seen, and I watch it on your face. I watch it in your brother's face, right? You guys get to impact people's lives with the tapping solution. You guys have created a real business that supports your family, that allows you to take trips and have confidence and security and freedom and control of your time. You're just telling about all the great trips you're taking with your family. Well, yeah. simultaneously, for a living, Alex, you are helping people through stress and anxiety and worry and fear with an amazing solution, whether that's a practitioner or the end person using your app, right? So you get to impact lives while creating success. And if I would have got you your first year of high school or college when you were doubting yourself and your grades are bad and you drank too much and all of us have gone through those phases and said, hey, yeah. someday Alex, you're gonna own the tapping solution with your family and you're like, me? I don't know what the hell you're right. talking about. I just got to get over this hangover right now. That's not me. Or that's maybe <laughs> my, you know, and I'm not saying like you drank every day. I get it. I partied, you know, we all had our moments, right? My only point is if you're looking for a way, again, me looking through this lens, a way to impact others that you're called to serve, that you're meant for more. The reason I love this industry is all of us. Yes, every single one of you listening, you have an experience, you have a mess that you went through, on, you're on the other side. Maybe tapping got you out of a mess and you have a process. You use tapping and maybe five other things, you got through the mess and you're on the other side. Somebody starting off on day one with that same stress, what would it be worth to them to show for you to give them the bridge to get to the end result faster? Maybe you went through a divorce, maybe you started a business, maybe you learned sales. You are a chapter ahead. It's what I learned. Tony learned from Jim Rohn and started teaching what he learned from Jim Rohn, right? I love what Tony says. He said, people in the self-education industry, the e-learning, whatever you want to call it, teaching, selling what you know. He said, it's like playing the piano. At first you play someone else's song, but the more you play, you end up inventing your own songs. And that, if, if leaning into that, we are in an economic winter. The economy is shifting. That's happening. If you just look at history, it's happening. Inflation, 41-year high. Recession seems, you know, inevitable. But if you understand where the world is going, you can look at things like the self-education industry that's exponentially growing. They just predicted it'll be a trillion dollar a year industry by 2028. It's about a billion dollars a day right now. And it's being fueled by regular people. Those of you listening and watching that say, wow, I do have a life experience. I do have a journey. I do have a mess that I'm on the other side. I do have a skill, a hobby, a passion that someone else would like to learn. And if I, you learn the process of sharing what you know, whether that's a course or an app or a mastermind or a workshop or an ebook or a coaching program, when you learn to share it, 
When you learn to identify what that is people want and how to elegantly get that to them and deliver it to them and sell it to them and make impact and income, I mean, I just think it's a, I might have gone in the weeds a little thick, but you asked me, what is a way to bolt on or grow in a shifting economy? Sell what you know. You don't have to store it. You don't have to warehouse it. You don't have to worry about supply chain issues. You have an unlimited supply and you get to impact people's lives by creating success. Now, that is my hammer. That is my screwdriver. This is what changed my life and Tony's life. I'm here today to say, if that's not for you or you don't think, I think you're crazy if you don't investigate, but something like this is a time not to sit on your hands. This is not a time to freeze. This is a time to be a question asker, an investigator. Look under every stone possible because though the economy is going like this, there's specific industries that are exponentially going to grow and you want to be there. Yeah. And, you know, I, I want to share, um, and when we talk about an economic winter, I suffered one of the last economic winters, which was in 2007. I still remember, you know, when we were in Wyoming having uh, a trip in a van, I forget where we were going, and I was talking about our real estate experience back then. I wish I'd known you back then to help me out a little bit more there because I know you're such a real estate expert. But I remember, you know, for, for five years or so, we flipped, you know, around 120 houses and had been doing that for some time and then got absolutely crushed in 2007 by the housing market collapse. And, you know, part of my, re- my wanting to share the work that you're doing right now in this Time to Thrive Challenge is... I don't want people to have to suffer the way that I did during that time where I was, you know, um, a couple payments away from having my house go into foreclosure, um, worrying about food. And, you know, as you know, with our family, we had our all our eggs in one basket. So this was yeah. myself, my brother, my father, all of us working together in this real estate investment business. I was just collapsing in an industry that had very little flexibility and very little control over my future there when the market was turning in the position that I was in. And it literally took us years to sell houses that we had and all that kind of stuff. And now looking at the position that we're in now in this industry of the self-education world, which I just absolutely love so much in terms of the impact you get to make, but also what it does for you financially in terms of the freedom that you have yeah. to, you know, I know next week when I'm, I'm going on vacation with a family for a week, I'll be, you know, I'll open up my computer, work for a couple hours and, and, and support my team and helping to continue to support the world with the work that we're doing. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm so passionate about telling people to say, hey, look into this world because you have such valuable and important information to share that can help somebody else to not have that tough time, to not suffer, to be able to come out of a tough time quicker than they're, than they're, they're able to deal with at that time. So uh, really so passionate about that self-education. I mean, even to the point where right now, I'll tell you in September, we talked about our kids a little bit, I'm taking you know one of my kids uh, my oldest, my 13 year old, to a five day event in Orlando with our friend, you know, Russell Brunson going to his event primarily to bring my son there for five days and I'm taking him out of school. My wife was like, should we take him out of school? I said, yes, this is about the best thing we could possibly do for him is to bring him into one of these self-education environments where that are so empowering and so life transforming in terms of the information that they that they give. So um, tell me a little bit more, you know, let's talk a little bit about the Time to Thrive Challenge and what's going on there. And, and I, again, I'm so passionate about this. I mean, for starters, any event that Tony is doing, just because of, I'm a lifelong uh, yeah. fan of Tony and everything he's done to me, but tell me a little bit about this Time to Thrive Challenge and why it is so important for people to show up to this and not just sign up, but show up to it and and be in it and get involved in it in terms of what it can do for them in that self-education world. Yeah. First off, you know, you said something, Alex, that really hit home in 07. I watched a lot of people go through that. And what I'd love to share is, isn't it better to anticipate and prepare than to react, right? Don't you wish someone came to you in 2005 and said, hey, things shift. I just want to tell you where things could go, Alex, right? It'd be better to prepare. And and sometimes when the world shifts, people ignore it and go, yeah, this won't be like last time. But, you know, it was um, Winston Churchill said, for those that don't understand history, it's bound to repeat itself, Yeah. right? So we have to look to the past. I hope... This was a little tiny blip and in six months, everything's fine, but all the indicators don't point that way. So we have to prepare, we have to investigate, we have to anticipate. Uh, The Time to Thrive Challenge, the reason we're calling it Time to Thrive is because a lot of people are gonna freeze and it's not a time to freeze, it's not a time to just try to survive. 
with the right capabilities, this is truly a time to thrive. So that's where the, the name came from. And what is it? It's Tony Robbins and myself. We've been dear friends for a decade. We've been partners for about four years, helping people see why you should be selling what you know. And if you know anything about Tony, I know Alex does. His desire to serve is, it's, um, it's relentless isn't the right word. It's yeah. obsessive. His desire to give back to like you tell Tony, hey, you got an hour on stage. He'll go five and he'll get off stage and say they needed me. I, I, how do I get off stage when they needed me? You missed your flight. Doesn't matter. They needed me. Like his yeah. desire to serve behind the curtain is more than you can imagine. So when we decided to help people do what collectively we've been doing for 65 years, selling what you know, for those of you who say, I'm not an expert, who would buy from me? I don't have a following. Could this really work for me? Can I really work from home? Yes, we'll crush all that, right? So we year one, we came out and we did like a three-hour training and let people know what it's all about. And we had 250,000 people show up. It was unbelievable. But we got done and Tony said, we got to give them more. Three hours isn't enough. And the next year we went a little longer. This year, it's five full days. It's five, not full days, five days, about three hours. It's going to be an, an hour and a half. If Tony's on that day, it's three hours. But five days called the Time to Thrive Challenge. We call it a challenge because we challenge you to show up, challenge you to think different, challenge you to think outside the box and challenge you to take action every day. And for five days, starting August 2nd, day one, we'll show you why this industry, why now and why you and why you're qualified. And that's Tony goes day one. It'll blow your mind. You can't miss it. When do you get Tony Robbins for free in a most amazing state, right? Day two, we'll show you how to identify what it is you should be selling. What experience in my life should be helping other people and identify who wants it. Day three, how to elegantly sell through service so you're not a salesperson. You're serving people and helping their needs. Day four, show you how to build an audience even if you don't have one follower online. And day five, we'll tie it all together and show you how to make it real. And we got amazing guests. Our friend Russell Brunson and Jenna Kutcher and Brendan Burchard and Lisa Nichols. Uh, we even have Matthew McConaughey coming because I love his book, Green Lights. And I think his book, he's in the self-education industry now, right? Yeah. And he wants to do more. Unbelievable. But all five days are designed to show you that this is a time to thrive. And you can go to Thrive. 185.com thrive 185.com when you're done listening if anything we said today intrigues you i'm serious show up and alex said it best don't just register i know zig ziglar said uh people don't pay they don't pay attention just because it's free don't discredit this tony has a waiting list of people that want to pay him a million a year to be his coach right that that's a fact brennan bouchard half those speakers get a hundred hundred fifty thousand dollars to speak for 90 minutes on stage I just got paid a quarter of a million dollars four weeks ago to do one day of consulting. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying to give you value of what you're going to receive. So it, we challenge you to pretend you paid five grand to be there and show up and play full out. And here's the byproduct. At the end of five days, you'll know that this is the industry for you, or you'll know that it's time for you to go deeper on whatever it is you're working at. So it's going to be pretty spectacular. It's only happening once. It's happening live. Uh, you can go to thrive185.com and, and, uh, and register. And here's what I'd suggest. Go register right now and then take thrive185.com and text it to two or three friends or one that can be your accountability partner. You get done with the 90 minutes, jump on a Zoom and say, what did you learn? What was your biggest takeaway? What can we do here? And, and, and take this serious because... The next three years are going to be pretty serious and you can, uh, you know, uh, this is again, I'm using Tony slogans here because we're, we know, but Tony says during winter, you can freeze and starve or you could sne ski and snowboard and the capabilities you acquire allow one or the other. Yeah. Um, you know, look, uh, the, the biggest point that I want to make the what you shared is just again, show up and, and, and do it for you and how it can transform your life and how you feel every day and the impact that you make. Um, I mean, I, I recently had my 13 year old do a, 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 an event with Tony, a UPW event, and it, and it changed his life because of how impactful he is, the time he has with you know what he shares. And this event not only has Tony, it has you, 
who, you know, you are such an amazing speaker um, and the information that you share is absolutely life transforming and you have so many other amazing speakers that are going to be joining you during this five day event. I didn't know it was five days. That's really amazing. It was, it was less last year. It was three. I mean, yeah. f- five days of free content. I don't know why somebody wouldn't show up for that. Um, but show up and be present and and do it because you know, as I said, that you have something more to give to the world and because you want to experience life at a deeper level where you experience happiness more fully, gratitude more fully, connection, love, joy more fully, because that is what this industry and this world can bring to you. And whether you're brand new to it and don't know anything about it and want to just explore it a little bit, or you've been in it, but you've been scared to go bigger and scared to learn more and scared and and holding yourself back, wondering, as so many of us done, saying, why me? Why would somebody want to listen to me? I, I, I promise you that people need your voice. People need to hear from you. They, you've got a unique message to share that if I tried to share it or Dean tried to share it, that, that we could be saying the same thing, but it wouldn't resonate with that person so that really needs your experience and your voice and your energy. So the world needs your voice. And so I hope that you know everyone shows up, that they go to thrive185.com, that they, that they uh, attend this amazing amazing event and that it transforms their life. So um, Dean, I can't thank you enough for for being here with me today to share your experience and your knowledge. Um, as I said at the beginning, you are somebody I admire, not just because of the incredible business success that you have, because there's so many people in the world who are successful and and yep. uh, and all that, but just because of the person that you are and how you show up in the world and how you show up as friends to myself and my brother and to all the people that you have any interaction with in the world, you are just such a good human being, and I'm so grateful to know you. Well, Alex, thank you so much. I feel the same for you. Can't wait for the next time we hang out. Awesome. So thank you, everybody. Um, And again, go to thrive185.com. I will be there. Show up and, and show up for your future.